Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and I hope you are all okay on that side of the screen. And today to share with you my opinion regarding the tests that I've been doing with the X2 and X3 family Android TV boxes from Yugos. I will leave a link down below so that you guys can check out prices, specifications and so on and so forth. Now, in terms of the design itself, these boxes are exactly the same portable now a few days ago i did test out these machines with a portable display trying to achieve and i did accomplish that uh, display and an android tv box powered by a power bank which is just an awesome feature and this is one of the goals of these machines portability now we will see the connectivity in just a few moments but one of the things is that these are powered uh, unlike the regular android tv boxes by a power adapter here the input is a micro usb which means that i can easily place this behind the tv and just use the tv usb output if that's the case to power this box with the cable actually the usb cable that comes is short as you can see it will be hanging or this is the idea be hanging uh, just behind the tv or behind the display and that's about it so this is the goal they have interesting features and i will share with you guys all of them starting with the connectivity which is the same as i was saying powered by a micro usb port and a AV out and we also have an infrared output which we can uh, use to extend actually inside the box there's a cable to extend the infrared signal at the front we will have a micro SD card slot one USB 2.0 and one USB 3.0 and then uh, at the back we have the Wi-Fi antenna reset switch also the uh, RJ45 Ethernet connection which is gigabit and also the optical audio output now on the left hand side we have the hdmi output which for some might be a disadvantage and i see this if you want to put uh, the box beneath a tv and then there will be the cable right over here but as i said this box the target at least is to put uh, behind a tv hanging or something like that so this is one of the things that you will have to decide when getting one of these boxes and of course we can put it right over here and probably try to find a way to hide the cable but it's a little bit more tricky in terms of the accessories it's the normal it comes with a power adapter with a micro usb a infrared remote control which i always advise to replace with an air mouse remote control which is a lot better and then in terms of specifications the x2 family comes with the am logic s905 x2 and the x3 family comes with the am logic s905 x3 now there are five different uh, devices on the x2 there are two different machines and on the x3 family there are three different machines what they will differ especially is the ram and storage capacity i will put something here on screen so that you guys can take a look and see it better for yourself these machines are powered by ugus which means that they develop the firmware and there are a few things that i really love on their boxes not only these but other boxes that we have tested here on the past which is some simple tweaks that i do to these machines on the options menu that makes these devices a little bit different i'll show you a few details right over there but as you can see i can easily turn one of these without having to mess with software and so on and so forth i can make one of these devices a server for samba uh, files nfs files or sif files i can also tweak a lot of things on the monitor hardware to show me i don't know a lot of things in customization status bar and so on and so forth so there are a lot of options that yugos usually implements on their boxes which makes a um, difference now one of the things that I don't like so much is the Yugo's launcher you guys know my opinion I prefer clean launchers but the thing is that we have the choice we can use their own launcher that comes pre-built in or we can just install any other launcher actually these boxes come with two launchers the Yugo's and the clean one but we can also install novel launchers and so on and so forth and that's one of the great things about having one of these pure Android TV boxes we can customize almost everything now moving really quickly to the benchmark so that you guys have an idea of what we have right over here and the differences between the x2 and x3 socks from am logic s905 to different versions but what i can say is that overall the results are really really good in terms of wi-fi both machines behave really well uh, i was getting really great results also in terms of the ethernet connection i was getting the max 
maximum bandwidth of my connection, which is a gigabit. So as you can see, really nice. In terms of the flash storage, also fast. We noticed that when we open and close apps, when we browse from app to app, these machines are quite responsible. And then when we look at Enton 2 results, just to check out the overall performance, what we can see is that the X3 is a little bit superior to the X2, which is to be expected. And if you, and if you search a little bit about these two socks, these two CPUs or system on a chip to be more precise, you will find that they have instead of the ARM Cortex A53, they are equipped with the ARM Cortex A55. So a little bit higher clock rates and so on and so forth, which will make a little bit of difference. Great. But the everyday person that uses Android TV box, well, you notice on real world performance, mm, I didn't and I really doubt that you will too but great in terms of the overall performance. Now moving to the real world performance, which is the most important part. And starting with YouTube, I was getting a great experience on the mobile app. The maximum resolution I was getting was 1080 or 1080p at 60 frames per second. No issues at all. Really, really fluid playback, which is what to be expected. I also installed, as you guys know, always the uh, Android TV version of YouTube, which is the one that I prefer. And Right there, I was able to get 4K at 60 frames per second without losing frames on a regular playback. And as you can see right over there, at some moments I was changing the resolution or changing the resolution menu and that is the only time that I will lose a few frames, but only then. If I'm playing a video or even fast forwarding and rewinding, I will have no issues at all. I only saw any downside right over here when I change the menu on the resolution. So great experience, 4K, 60 frames per second, only has this really small tweak that failed, but on a regular usage, no worries at all. Now moving to IPTV services, uh, I did test around with three of them, my local IPTV services from TV providers and they all worked really well, no issues at all as well. Moving to Codiplex and MB, all the tests that I made on files, MKV Blu-rays at 1080 resolution, H.264 8-bit, no worries at all, which is my library that I've got right over here. And I believe that most of you guys have the same format for your movie and TV series library. But I also tested a few samples, 4K, H.265, H.264 codecs, 8-bit and 10-bit, especially right over here. And it passed all the tests with the exception of one, which all the machines failed to pass, uh, which is the Big Bug Bunny 4K at 60 frames per second it always make machines uh, lose a few frames and this is one of them now what we are seeing is that these machines are getting better and better and better and the results are getting better and better but still didn't pass if you ask me hey robert what was the last machine that did pass that test nvidia shield at the latest generation and even the oldest generation did pass all the others did not now if netflix is very important to you just have in mind that uh, rooted machines like this which have a lot of advantages will not work with netflix unfortunately i also tested hbo uh, portugal and it did not work so i believe that it will not work for any other country and then lastly in terms of gaming i've got no complaints at all because i was able to play the asphalt extreme asphalt line 8 and so on and so forth really with a really nice experience so no worries right over there and i also did play game stream rocket league and with a great experience because these machines have great ethernet speeds i'm not really sure if i did record it on screen but it didn't if i didn't just believe my words uh, it was another machine that really passed that test uh, which is the ability to game stream games from our computer to one of these regardless if we have it right over here on the living room on the bedroom and so on and so forth and that is it guys hopefully this video was helpful to show off these two machines pros and cons and interesting machines in my opinion with a target audience for those of you that want portability for those of you that want to hide a small thing behind the tv it's a great experience of course having the option of your Android. Hopefully the video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget the usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.